in today's micro lesson, we are going to be talking about mills. Anytime we discuss mills, we're referencing real property taxes. We're talking about how real property taxes are calculated. Now here in North Carolina, you may remember that when we're calculating property taxes, we're basing it off of some dollar amount for every $100 of the assessed value. Now it would be great if everybody did it that way, but unfortunately they don't. A lot of other states will quote their property tax rates in mills. Now before I break this down, I want to remind you, this is not the first time you've heard of taxes being broken down into a dollar rate. For example, sales tax. If I was going to explain sales tax to an eight-year-old, I might say something like, for every $1 you spend, there is an additional amount of tax that you need to pay. So let's say our tax rate was eight cents. If you buy something for $1, you would owe eight cents in taxes. If you buy something for $2, you would owe 16 cents in taxes. If you buy something for $3, you would owe 24 cents in taxes. And if you were to buy something for $3.50, how much would you owe? Well, we know there are $3.51 in $3.50, so we're gonna pay eight cents 3.5 times, which gives us an amount of 0.28. So it would be a tax of 0.28 or a tax of 28 cents if you bought something for $3.50. Now let's take what we know about sales tax and apply it to real estate taxes using mills. Officially, a mill is worth one-tenth of one cent. So we can break a mill down into our current money system. Let's take quarters for an example. A quarter is worth 25 cents and we know there are 25 pennies in a quarter. A quarter is worth 0.25 and if we divide it into 25 separate pieces, we're gonna get a penny is worth 0.01. Well, imagine a penny is broken down into 10 pieces, and we say there are 10 mills in every penny. A penny is worth 0.01. If we divide that into 10 pieces, we'll find out the value of a mill is 0.001. So when we're talking about taxes, tax rates with mills are quoted as an amount. So somebody might have a property tax and it might be five mills, which means they're paying five mills for every $1 of value. So they're going to pay 0 0.001 five times, which gives us 0 0.005 per $1 of assessed value. Well, if a property has a tax rate of 12 mills, then they're gonna pay 0 0.001 12 times for every $1 of the assessed value, meaning they're going to pay 0 0.012 for every $1 of the assessed value. And if somebody has a property with a tax rate of 38 mills, then they're going to pay 0 0.001 38 times for every dollar of the assessed value, and that's going to give us 0 0.03 Eight that needs to be paid per $1 of the assessed value. So when you get to the exam, don't be surprised if you see a problem similar to this. Maybe they'll tell you that a house is worth $160,000 and hopefully they'll tell you that's the assessed value. Don't be surprised if they make you find it though. So if the assessed value is $160,000, and they tell you the tax rate is eight mills, we can do this math. We know that eight mills needs to be multiplied by 0 0.001, giving us a mill rate of having to pay 
point zero zero eight for every one dollar in the assessed value. Doing that math, that means we're going to pay point zero zero eight for every one dollar value, which is going to be a hundred and sixty times, and that's going to give us a tax amount of one thousand two hundred and eighty dollars. That would be the answer to the problem. So as a recap, let's talk about what we've learned. We know that a mill is worth one-tenth of one cent, meaning a mill is worth 0 .001, and that there are 10 mills in one cent. All you need to do is take the number of mills and multiply it by 0 .001, to get a rate that's going to be per dollar of assessed value. And then we're going to multiply by that assessed value, giving us a grand total for your taxes. I really do hope this helps. And if you have questions on how you can pass your real estate exam, please take a look at any of the other videos on my channel. See you soon.